Hi, my name is Dakona and I am a student in the Department of Health Policy and Management at the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill. And this summer I've been working with Dr. Corina Sorensen at the Duke Magonia Center for Health Policy to investigate the prescribing patterns of providers via telehealth during the COVID-19 pandemic. We have seen in the past year, many providers transition to telemedicine in an effort to reduce in-person visits and curb the spread of the coronavirus. However, there are some concerns with telehealth and one of those concerns is inappropriate prescribing. Inappropriate prescriptions are a contributing factor to low value care. About $30 billion is wasted on low value medication use every year. Now that is any kind of medication or prescription that provides little or no value to the patient and may actually cause harm. While telemedicine may increase access to healthcare, it may also lead to overprescribing as a result of the breakdown in the prescriber-patient relationship um, and uncertainty about a patient's diagnosis, ability to receive follow-up care, among other factors. For this literature review, we aimed to investigate whether the increased use of telehealth during the pandemic influenced prescribing behavior. We searched both the peer-reviewed literature and gray literature to study provider prescribing patterns via telehealth, our search strategy included terms related to inappropriate prescribing, telehealth, and COVID-19. After screening articles for relevance, about 24 articles were included in this review. Our results are split up into three case studies, antibiotics, opioids, and antidepressants and anti-anxiety medications. Firstly, in the case of antibiotics, what the literature suggests is that in the beginning of the pandemic, antibiotic prescriptions decreased across virus healthcare settings. We actually saw some providers display higher guideline concordant man management of antibiotics when utilizing telehealth. Um, however, previous evidence does indicate that antibiotic prescribing actually varies by geographical location and that providers in the Northeast and in the South are more likely to prescribe antibiotics than other parts of the US. In the second case study, uh, we saw that loosened restrictions on telehealth prescriptions during COVID-19 have been associated with an increase for prescriptions for the treatment of opioid use disorder. Um, this came as a result of loosening on the restriction that governs the prescription of controlled substances, especially via telehealth. Meanwhile, some providers have actually prescribed more opioids during the COVID-19 pandemic. As you can see in figure one, about 30% of physician members of the Spine Intervention Society prescribed more opioids during the COVID-19 pandemic via telehealth. And this has serious implications for the opioid epidemic. In the last case study regarding antidepressants and anti-anxiety medications, a survey that soliciting clinical judgment actually showed that physicians reported that telehealth was clinically appropriate for depression and anxiety ma management. An observational study of veterans receiving mental health care treatment indicated that weekly prescriptions for psychotropics ranged from a 2% decrease to a 4% increase, but new prescriptions new patient prescribing decreased 21% to 50%. What that indicates is that prescribing behavior for current patients remained rather stable, but new patient prescribing decreased. Um, now that can be one of two things, either there are some obstacles that some patients face in accessing mental health care, or um, there's been more caution that's been exercised by providers when it comes to prescribing medications to new patients that have not had an in-person visit. Based on our literature search, we have four recommendations uh, to improve and inform the prescribing patterns via telehealth during the COVID-19 pandemic. Firstly, um, our recommendation is to develop and strengthen best practice guidelines uh, to help aid the clinical decision making for telehealth prescribing. Our second recommendation is to adopt and revise telehealth policies that have been put in place during COVID in ways that actually encourage high value necessary care and actually limit waste uh, that happens due to inappropriate prescribings. Our third recommendation is to screen patients for telehealth suitability. Not all patients may be suitable for telehealth. And in that case, we suggest 
exploring hybrid models, especially in the case that telehealth is here to stay, uh, for patients that would be better served by a combination of face-to-face -face visits and telehealth. Lastly, our recommendation is to increase access to data on individual prescribers and create actionable feedback to improve medication stewardship. Uh, what the evidence suggests is that when prescribers have access to data about how much they're prescribing, especially in relation to other prescribers, this actually influences their prescribing behavior. In conclusion, what the literature suggests is that prescribing behaviors vary over telehealth, which is important implications for patient safety and healthcare expenditure. Overall, more research is needed to determine the long-term impact of prescribing medications without an in-person visit. Thank you.